let me kick everything off then. First, welcome everybody to our virtual town hall meeting. Great to see all your little snapshots and so on there. And I, I just have a, a couple of very brief things to tell you. One is the welcome, happy new year, everybody. I hope you're all well and safe. Okay. And that uh, we are re getting ready for our next user run begins in just a, about a week and a half, 10 days now. And uh, we are already, the storage ring is up and running really well right now. The beam lines are all ready to go. Uh, and we will uh, are fully intending to have uh, on-site users. This run, the university is uh, continuing to allow visitors. So we are very excited and ready to go. All beam lines and storage ring are ready to go. Uh, the other thing uh, we're very excited about is that this spring, in April 1st, we are planning to break ground on the civil construction for the new experimental called the, called the new high magnetic field facility. A, uh, and that will be uh, a feature to live with for the next several years, but it's very, very exciting. Thing. And so I think uh, the major changes that we talked about on uh, the agenda today is to talk about um, because of COVID, we have more procedure changes. And, and let me hand off to uh, our uh, executive administrator, uh, Katie Jacoby, who will uh, give you all the latest and greatest. Thank you, Joel. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, so one of the uh, items that we wanted to run through with you today is talk um, a little bit about what our first run of 2022 will look like, which does begin on January 26th. So we're very excited because as of right now, we are still able to accommodate both remote and in-person users. Um, uh, but the landscape is ever changing, uh, as I'm sure you all uh, also have experienced. So we will also ask for uh, your help and patience with us as we <coughs> move through inevitable uh, policy shifts and um, adjustments throughout uh, what feels to us even like every day we are, are making those changes. So one of the things that we wanted to highlight for you today is um, the updated user guide. Thank you, Susan. So our user guide, which you can find at chess.cornell.edu and then the drop down under users, um, we have worked to give you detailed instructions on how to complete um, all the steps needed to be prepared to come in person or remotely uh, for your experiment, um, or um, then during your experiment, and then even some information for post beam time. Um, so what I will do in the next couple of slides is actually dive through um, items that we specifically want to draw your attention to and highlight for today. So it wouldn't be a, a good meeting if we didn't talk about COVID, right? Uh, and so the university uh, has uh, announced that visitors are allowed on campus, but they are not allowed to access any of Cornell's uh, campus or buildings without prior approval. And so what we have worked on is putting in place what uh, the procedure will look like to gain the prior approval. Uh, visitors participating in research activities are expected to follow the same public health requirements as faculty and staff, which includes wearing masks when indoors, uh, regardless of your vaccination status. So in order to gain approval to come to Wilson Lab, all users, what, Back one slide, Susan, I haven't quite, thank you. Um, all users will be required to complete a vaccination status appointment. We're calling it a VSA. And this will be done virtually through Zoom. Um, in order to complete this step, there are a number of ways that you can provide verification of either uh, proof of vaccination or a negative COVID-19 test. Um, the table on this slide gives you some sense of the timeline um, for scheduling your virtual vaccination status appointment. 
So if you are going to use uh, proof of being fully vaccinated, we can do that anytime prior to your arrival. And for Cornell affiliated users who are participating in daily check, you can at any time prior to your arrival, use your green status um, in lieu of providing a negative test or um, a proof of full vaccination. If you are going to use either a PCR test or an antigen test result, of course, having to be negative, then your timeline for scheduling your virtual uh, status appointment, vaccination status appointment, is either within 72 hours or within six hours of your arrival at Wilson Lab. It's really, really, really important to note that you're not permitted on campus until this step has been completed. And at this time, we are not able to accommodate this during your traditional check-in at the start of your beam time. So please make certain, you'll see lots of communication from us in the user's office, and please make certain that if you are planning um, either yourself or anyone within your group to be in person uh, for any part of your experiment, it is really important that you do this virtual vaccination status appointment before coming to Wilson Lab. Next slide, Susan. So additionally, the university recently revised um, the on-campus masking expectation to higher quality masks, as these do a significantly better job of limiting the spread of infection than other masks. So examples would include the American Society for Testing and Materials medical masks, N95s, KN95s, and KF94s. Cloth masks do not meet the masking expectation. Um, and we will make certain that we have in kind of key locations, whether in the user office in the check-in area or chess ops and throughout Wilson Lab, the building itself, we will make certain that we have these high quality masks available as necessary. So speaking of the user office, the user office is moving and will have a new location starting on January 26th. So this is uh, a relocation of the user office due to the start of the construction for the high magnetic field X-ray beam line and the new experimental hall. So you'll see in that uh, image at the top, um, on the right hand side, a big X where the second floor chess uh, reception area entrance used to be and will no longer uh, be an active uh, entrance or exit during construction. So the image at the bottom of the slide gives you an indication of as you park in the back lot, the lower back lot, and walk in where you would normally walk along that sidewalk to the second floor entrance. Instead, now we're going to route you down to the first floor. Um, and as you walk into the lab from the first floor, the chess user office will be the first office on your right. I'm sorry, my puppy is um, thrown a fit in the background if you're all hearing that. Um, so the, the user office will be the first office on your right as you walk in just past where you could um, take another right and walk onto the experimental floor. And we're really excited about the shift in um, the location of the user office, and we think that this will be um, a really nice addition to creating um, you know, a really nice uh, traffic flow from the experimental floor to chess ops and to the user office all day, down on the first floor. Um, our next item that we wanted to give you an update on is that we are moving to duo two-step authentication. Um, so because users are now able to collect data remotely, we're introducing the duo two-factor authentication as an extra security measure um, for remote logins to chess computers. 
So all remote users will need to go through a quick five minute process to enroll in Duo before their beam time begins. And we've asked Devin Bougie, our assistant director of IT to uh, give us a quick live demonstration of what it will look like for users to sign up the first time to get their Duo uh, operable. Can I hand you off? Devin? Yes, thank you, Katie, and welcome everybody. Um, so we did want to demonstrate the process kind of from the very beginning of receiving a class, a class uh, account for our, for our infrastructure, for our computing systems. Um, as a reminder, to you receive a class account, it's an automated procedure. We've done quite a bit of development over this over the years recently, especially. Um, if you are in UserDB listed as a collaborator on a proposal that has beam time in the current run, a class account will be automatically created for you once you've created or once you've successfully completed the remote uh, user quiz. Once your account is created, you'll receive an email, which I'm sharing here. It is from service-class at cornell.edu. It says new class computer account created. Occasionally, this will end up in a junk folder, um, did not for me in this case. And the important first step here um, is to go ahead and activate your account. So you'll go to this first link. Um, this is a new account that I have just created. You put in the username that you see in that email and put in your last name and click on activate. That will generate an email that you'll receive hopefully quickly and here it is so i will copy this activation code go back to my web browser paste it in and check the code it will tell me that my account has been located successfully i will continue and then it will let me set my password for the first time So I've done that. It has various guidelines that are listed there. I'll set the password. And it takes a little bit to synchronize through all of our Active Directory domain controllers. Um, it says several minutes. Hopefully, it's more like one. Um, so this, I should also say, this was for somebody who has never been, who has never been to chess before, has never had a class account. Um, Everything I said about your account being created is also true for somebody that already has one. So if you already have a class account, your account will be automatically renewed and you will receive a notification email telling you that your account has been renewed. Um, once, you know, it, starting two weeks before the current beam time. As long as you again are listed as a collaborator on a proposal, have completed the remote user quiz. Your account will be automatically created and renewed and or renewed. Um, and they are active for three weeks after the end of that uh, beam time, after that entire run. So I have finished setting my class password. The next step, which you can get from the, uh, the user guide that Katie was sharing, or again from this email, is to enroll with Duo. Enrolling with Duo is a one-time process. Um, we have several enrollment methods, but we highly recommend you just click on this first link to use the self-service enrollment. I will, I've never, it's a brand new account I've never registered before. So I just put in my username, click class ID and the password that I just set. And it gives me, and so basically it's a self-documenting, it walks you right through the process. Um, and asks you what type of device you'd like to add. I will add my phone. Asks you for your phone number. Verify that that's correct. Click on continue. And then it can either call me or it can text me a verification code. I chose to text me and there it is. Continue and now I'm done. And that was the entire process. Um, so here I'm in the, in the, after successfully enrolling, activating Duo, 
Um, in general, we recommend just leaving it as to choose an authentication method. If you know if you don't have your phone or your device, um, it can also call you. It can call you, send you an SMS text message. We do also support the uh, Duo hardware token, which we can purchase for twenty five dollars um, as needed. But so. I'm basically done enrolling in Duo. So now the next step, last step, would be to test my class account using No Machine. Um, so I'll go to here, pull up No Machine. Um, you will create a new account to nomachine.class.cornell.edu. Um, that is, sorry, maybe I should show that. Um, so it's just, I gave it a name of No Machine. The host is nomachine.class.cornell.edu. You can leave everything else at the default settings. Go to connect to that, put in my username, log in, and it will let me choose if I want to do a push, a phone call, or a passcode. Um, if you have a hardware token, that will also be an option. I'll choose the push. I will get it on my phone. If Team or Zoom lets me show it, um, but it says, are you logging into a class account? I'll click approve and there I am now logged into the cloud server. The first time you test, we recommend you go to the No Machine test system, which is up and running for anybody to connect to. And there we go. With that, um, I guess we'd like to open up the floor for any questions, either about Duo, about our IT infrastructure, um, or any questions in general. I'd encourage you to use the chat feature. And I believe Katie has some questions that were already received. So thank you. I do. Thank you, Devin. Um, while everyone is either raising their hand or throwing a chat, a question in the chat, I'll get us started. Um, we had asked for any questions that individuals might want to uh, send in advance. Um, so one of the questions that we received is, are high quality masks required for on-site users? The answer is yes. And if so, will CHESS be able to provide them? Yes, we are working on making certain that we have um, masks available that are high quality based off of what the university is recommending. Is there a limit of how many on-site visitors are allowed per beam line? In this moment in time, there are not any uh, limits on how many on-site visitors are allowed at each beam line at any, at any time. Now, again, we are all expected to follow the uh, health and safety requirements. And so that means masking and where you can, uh, social distancing is strongly encouraged. Next question is, is there a testing requirement for non-Cornell on-site users, especially for those who are on-site for longer than a week? So for users who are going to be on-site for longer than one week, we will need to um, talk to you individually and figure out how to handle that. As of right now, the university's guidelines for researchers is limited to one week. And so if we're going to extend beyond that, then there is the possibility that we would need to um, come up with an alternative plan, which may include um, some uh, testing requirements, kind of consistent testing requirements. Um, but again, that would have to be something that um, we would have to talk about in a kind of a one-off situation um, as that were to come up. For right now, our policies are designed um, looking at uh, users who would be on site for less than the one week period, of, not exceeding the one week period of time. I have more questions, but I will pause in case anyone would like to ask a question. Look, we have one. We have a couple in the chat as well. I don't know if you want to go to those first. We'll go to a live living person and then go to them. Okay. 
Sorry. Andre, you're, uh, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, I was um, wondering, uh, there was a discussion, I remember back in a uh, few, few months ago, if, uh, will there be an option to have uh, both users on site and use the, uh, the virtual, the no machine um, uh, access so that the groups could have students on site and have somebody from home helping to drive the experiment? Yes. Uh, now everything is available. It, it's pretty much up to the discretion of the user group how they want to take advantage of the remote access and the on-site access. So, so we're just trying to provide portals so you can do it securely and so on. And then that tends to do all the homework. So uh, a caution there, if you do use local and remote, have fun fighting for control of the mouse. Great. Okay. Thank you, Andre. Um, another question in the chat. It looks like I forgot if a phone number is required for Duo. If so, does it have to be a US number? I'll direct that to someone in IT. Sure. Thank you. Um, no, a phone number is not required. It is an option. And no, it does not have to be a, if you would like to use the phone call option, it does not have to be a US number. The phone call from Duo for your two-step verification will come from the US. But you do not, it is not required to have a phone number or for it to be a US number. Thank you. Thanks, David. All right, another question. Is it essential to obtain a booster alongside the vaccine? So as of right now, the university has not provided guidance to us for visitors with regard to booster. Um, it's staff, faculty and staff and students are required to have the booster, um, but we have not heard anything at this point for visitors. Right now, the proof of full vaccination would mean for Pfizer or Moderna that you have had are two weeks past your second shot and for Johnson & Johnson, uh, two weeks past your your first shot. Next question. Yes, Joel, were you? No. Okay. Um, if I am going to chest for less than one week, but I will use another facility, I assume on campus this means, which extends to more than one week, does that count as the no more than a week rule? So this is a really, really great question. I am going to interpret this as, so what, so what the university has said is that we are responsible, there has to be a host for each visitor. So in this particular case, I would interpret this as while you spend time at CCMR, they're your host and they're responsible for monitoring your amount of time. And then when you're with us, we are your host and we're responsible for monitoring that time. So I would say, no, this does not count as more than a week based off of how the university, the university has not asked us to, um, create a central kind of cumulative count of days for visitors. And it's instead uh, isolated to uh, each host unit. But Joel Brock, you feel free to, okay. Yeah. Uh, next question. What is the airport to fly into to access chess? And is there a guest house on site? There is not a guest house on site. That one is a relatively easy uh, answer. Airports to fly into to access chess. Um, there is the Ithaca, uh, Tompkins County Airport, code ITH, the Syracuse Airport, SYR. Um, Syracuse is about an hour away from 
chess, whereas Ithaca is about five minutes away from Wilson Lab. Uh, we do have other airports in the area, but the drive time starts to uh, creep up on you to get to Wilson Lab. That could, if you wanted to look at Rochester, that's uh, ROC. That could also be another alternative. But I will then defer to those of you that are flying in. Does anybody else use other airports? The two big ones are Ithaca and Syracuse for flying. Yeah. I guess we don't have a guest house on the site, but if we have a relationship with the Best Western, there's a, a favorable rate there. So if you you're looking for a place to stay in intensely in your campus, the user office can give you the connection. And just to put a plug in for the user section of the web page, if you go to um, the main drop down under users and uh, go down to travel and lodging, um, travel and lodging gives you uh, both information on the airport um, and the best Western uh, information. Uh, where we do have a specially negotiated rate, but there are also other um, other hotels to stay at on that page as well. Uh, okay, uh, another question that we received in advance, how will the in person measurement policies change in light of Omicron? I hope that um, we have been able to give a detailed response to that. Um, virtual vaccination status appointment is absolutely your key uh, component to gaining access to Wilson Lab. Um, please make certain that you set that up in advance. How is the working schedule of the HMF construction site been has that been affected due to Omicron? Not yet. <laughs> nope. In fact, if Ernie were on here and jumping in, I'll do my best to channel Ernie and what he would say. He would say, in fact, we're accelerating the timeline. Um, so uh, we are very excited to be able to say that we're going to start seeing construction fencing go up in April as soon as this coming April, which is only a few months away, and uh, we will be doing site uh, prep and planning leading in starting now and leading up to the construction fencing going up. So we are a full steam ahead and Ernie and a bunch of people within chess and class and facilities at Cornell and Cornell and the town and we are all um, working on this just as quickly as possible and there's a lot of enthusiasm to to be able to accelerate that timeline a year sooner than what we were anticipating. I'm doing an awful lot of the talking. Does anybody else have questions, discussion, anything you would like to say, speak up? There was another question in the chat, Katie. Um, I don't know if you just wanna just quickly address that. Somebody else answered it, but. Oh, thank you, Jim. And the answer is yes, it is approved. Andre, go ahead. Can I ask? An, yeah, so I, I was wondering uh, if there are any restrictions uh, on food and drinks uh, extra because of COVID inside chess, um, or is that as as before? Uh, great question. So because of the requirement at all times, regardless of vaccination status, to uh, be appropriately masked, Food and drinks um, is, is a challenge because in order to take your mask off, you need to either be outside six feet away from others, 
um, in a private office where there is no one else um, or a private setting, again, maintaining uh, at least six feet, although the university might actually encourage or recommend 10 feet at that. I'd have to go back and look at what the university's uh, language says. But um, certainly the expectation is that if you are within six feet of anyone else, you are fully and appropriately masked at all times. And so food and drink, I mean, beyond typically we can't have food and drink on the experimental floor, um, but certainly making, a, you know, in, in, in spaces out, outside of the experimental floor, making certain that there is the appropriate amount of social distancing happening and I know it is very cold outside right now, so we really don't want to go outside on the patio to eat, but as much as you can try to um, stay outside with your mask off, that's the, the recommendation. Well, while there's a little dead air here, I might do another little plug for the chess website. Um, since everything is kind of changing frequently, we're going to do our best to keep this tab right here for users updated with the most recent information. Katie pointed this out before. There is a user's guide, which has uh, detailed information on things for people that are remote and in person. Uh, under this tab, there's the COVID-19 guidelines for in-person users. Uh, and then you'll find a bunch of other tools here that would specifically benefit a uh, user, uh, like the travel and lodging, getting here, airports, hotels. I think these links take you to the, uh, uh, the rates that we've worked out with Best Western. I'm not 100% sure, but going to this tab is probably going to be your best bet for future questions. And if you can't find it there, please re reach out to the chess users office. And I'll put that all in the chat. We did not mention it, but we have had some turnover um, in the users office specifically. So um, Sam and Megan were uh, fortunate enough to get promotions and, and move on to the within the university. Uh, we're very excited for them. However, it has left us, um, you know, kind of uh, filling in. So you'll see new faces in the user office. Um, what I think is most important to note is, Andy, you'll include this in the chat, but the chess user office at cornell.edu email is the best way to get a hold of us um, rather than uh, specifically emailing an individual. So please make certain that you are utilizing that chess user office at cornell.edu email address. A new question in chat about the ESAs. Yep. Oh, great. Thank you. Yes. So once you have scheduled a vaccination confirmation appointment, it will be handled via Zoom. So what will happen is you'll go into the um, online system to schedule your uh, VSA. And what we will do then is we will be monitoring that and then working to set up individual Zoom links. Um, for each person at the particular time. So what you will get is um, an invitation to join um, Zoom at the time that you had chosen um, for your appointment. And then at that point, um, we will also um, do some, you know, kind of last minute check in with you to make certain that you have everything else prepared in order to, um, when you come on site to have your, um, check in, go as smoothly as possible. And we just got, yes, excellent. We have people actively using the system. Thank you. And we are happy to take feedback, of course, at any point in time through all of this. We're making these new policies and procedures up on the fly. And so we know we're not going to have it 100% the first go round. And so please give us feedback. 
we had all of the uh, dual mobile, dual factor authentication, all of the, uh, the screening and so on is uh, trying to keep people safe. So in terms of viruses, whether they're computer viruses or human viruses and so on. It's, and so, uh, so please bear with us that, and if, that we're op definitely open for constructive suggestions of how we can make things safer or less onerous. And so, that we're sort of learning how to do this on the fly. And, and frequently we have to respond in real time as the rules change, that they just kind of come out and we have to do something. So uh, yeah, please check the website. We'll try to keep up to date. The, the, the newest, latest, greatest things will be showing up there. Also, I'd just like to give a huge pat on the back to, to several groups of the, the user office folks for putting it all together and getting all of these new things and safety things in line. To the IT group for getting the digital mobile and to our accelerator group for uh, what's just an amazingly quick startup and successful startup with the storage room. Which I'm trying not to jinx anything here, but we're, we are really poised to have a really uh, wonderful run in just a few weeks. And we're looking forward to you know, a ton of science right out of the gate here. And we're ready to go. Uh, and really looking forward to uh, seeing people either virtually or in person. Both. And uh, some really awesome science coming up in just you know, about 10 days from now. There are no more questions, and I think I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. And best wishes for a, a truly awesome set of runs coming up and really look forward to seeing everybody and, uh, and, and everybody getting some fantastic data this winter and spring. Happy new year, everybody. Yes, thank you. Happy new year. Happy new year, take care. Happy new year.